اللهم لبيك لبيك لا Let's ask commissioners made the necessary for your comfort. The preparation is very good. I'm very happy, extremely happy, because this is my first time. And I prepare to follow the rules and regulations given to me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Glad to have you on the program as you answer the call. Your window into the activities of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other heart-related matters. I am Rashida Abubakar Yorugla and Co. The provision of medical services to Nigerian pilgrims during the heart exercises is a key mandate of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON. This explains why it is necessary for the Commission to constitute a medical team each heart season in order to meet the health needs of Nigerian pilgrims in line with international best practices. It is also to ensure compliance with Saudi regulations governing the operation of clinics during hearts. Over the years, NACON has kept to this tradition and the 2023 heart was not any different. In this edition of the program, we shall examine how the national medical team fared in the discharge of its responsibility in meeting the medical needs of Nigerian pilgrims at the just-concluded heart exercise. Stay tuned for this and more. Also in the program is making the heart and the discussion is on the conduct of pilgrims after performing the heart. Similarly, the edition has other regular segments such as NACON News Diary, which highlight the activities of NACON and other stakeholders in the heart industry. Stay with us for this and more. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. As usual, we'll begin the program with the News Diary. Topping the lineup, airlift of Nigerian pilgrims continue in earnest as more pilgrims unite with their families. Plus, state intensify calls for pilgrims to respect luggage guidelines. Details shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> The airlift of Nigerian pilgrims back home is continuing steadily and the National Hajj Commission, NACON, is optimistic that the operations will be completed ahead of schedule. So far, more than 40,000 pilgrims have been brought back since the exercise got underway in the last three weeks. The pilgrims are from Nasarawa, Plateau, Sokoto, Zampara, Lagos and Ogun states. Before their departure, the pilgrims bear their minds on the 2023 Hajj exercise. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, it was a, a huge and massive opportunity to come and witness Hajj. All I have to say is uh, Alhamdulillah for everything and then for the uh, Borno Pilgrims Board and now come for, for putting all whatever it takes to make sure that this Hajj is a success operation. We have to thank Almighty Allah for giving us this opportunity to uh, successfully complete the pillar of Islam, one of the pillar of Islam, that is Hajj. Alhamdulillah, and we are praying to Allah to accept our, our deeds. Narcon is hoping to conclude the airlift in the first week of August 2023. <laughs> Meanwhile, pilgrims are continuing with the weighing of their 32 kg luggage for onward delivery to different Hajj camps in Nigeria, where they will claim them upon arrival. As a policy, each pilgrim is entitled to 32 kg main bag and 8 kg handbag. With the airlift exercise underway, Narcon and officials of state pilgrims boards and the FCT have developed strategies to ensure that the luggage of each pilgrim does not exceed the stipulated kilograms they are allowed to carry 
and to also ensure that they don't carry any prohibited items. We organize the uh, sensitization and enlightenment to our pilgrims, and then we told them that uh, uh, the luggage is uh, for 32 uh, kg, and then the hand luggage is 8. As they were packaging their bags, most of those who come around to package the bags for them, they have a weigh machine. So we told them, please ensure that you weigh them in your room before you come to the weigh center proper. So if it is 32, alhamdulillah, but we also informed them that it, you don't come and embarrass yourself at the Wayne Center. We had to, you know, uh, create a little uh, ad hoc committee that will look into that. Uh, one, not to allow people to carry contrabands, things that are prohibited, things like metal objects, things like uh, liquid that exceed 100 millimeters in their luggages, both hand and uh, the other uh, 32 kg. So we had to ensure compliance so that we have a hitch-free, you know, uh, conveyance. The pilgrims share their experiences on how they complied with the luggage rules and regulations. They say 32. My own claw is 30. I did my own 30. I didn't opt to that 32 more because I don't want embarrassment. And the rest of my colleagues, they're doing their best. Most of them, they are up to 32, some are 30 or some are 28. Over the years, effective handling of pilgrims' luggage and compliance with the policy of not exceeding 8 kg for hand luggage and 32 kg for the main bag contributed greatly to smooth and successful airlift operation. They have to ensure that whatever... In other news, the 2023 Niger State Amir al-Hajj and Emir of Burgu Kingdom, Dr. Mohammed San Halur Antoro, has advised Narcon and Saudi authorities to find a lasting solution to the issue of tense shortage in Mina. The Emir stated this during an interview in Makkah shortly before flying back to Nigeria. They have to ensure that whatever uh, facility we are going to be given here commensurates with the number of our pilgrims that are coming here. If we are not going to have such I mean, facilities for them, then there is no point we bring uh, so much number of our pilgrims here to, go, to, to suffer. So the NACON has to actually uh, see that changes have been done. They have to talk to the Saudi authority because if they don't do that, it means we'll continue to suffer this. On the feeding arrangements also in Mana, the Maybargu said the only way out is for Saudi authorities to allow Narcon and states take that responsibility. The feeding was centralized. We as states have to come and collect from one center, so and it's, it's too much. It has to be decentralized. In fact, I, I don't think uh, I, sh I think every state should be allowed to take responsibility of the feeding and accommodation of their own uh, programs. So that if you don't perform well, you know that it is your state that doesn't perform. Many countries, including Nigeria, experience shortages of tents and poor feeding services during the stay in Muna and Arafat. Alhamdulillah, if you are just tuning in, the program is As You Answer the Call, sponsored by the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, to keep you informed about the activities of the commission and other heart-related matters. Very central to the well-being of every Nigerian pilgrim is the provision of quality medical services in the course of the heart. And so, to achieve this noble objective during the 2023 HAT, NACON again set up the national medical team as required by the Act establishing the Commission to meet the medical needs of Nigerian pilgrims at the just concluded HAT exercise. In the next segment of the program Spotlight, we shall examine how the medical team fared in the discharge of its duties. Keep watching. Thank you.
This is one of the health facilities for outpatients at one of the nine clinics set up by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, in Makatil Mukarrama. When pilgrims take ill, they visit any of the clinics nearest to them and take turns for consultation with doctors and are thereafter provided medication if necessary. The clinics are open to patients every hour of the day. We know that this year, the 2023 heart operation will be a special kind of operation because this is the first time in many years that uh, Nigeria is coming with a very large contingent of 95,000 pilgrims. And with this number, we anticipate that the clinic visits will be very high. There is no age restriction. There is no uh, any other kind of restriction. So we knew that our hands would be full. We offer clinical services, which is uh, mainly establishment of clinics and then um, and medical consultations and so on. But we also uh, provide emergency response services. We provide uh, um, public health education services. We introduce infection prevention and control. And then we also provide uh, what we call tracking services. Nakan cites these clinics closer to where pilgrims reside for ease of access. We had two, or we have two main clinics. Uh, that provide um, uh, admission services as well. And, um, and then we had um, uh, seven outposts. These outposts are all located within uh, clusters of pilgrim accommodation. For example, uh, the main clinic is located along uh, Ibrahim Kali Road in, uh, in Masfala. And then you have outposts along Kudai, within Sokoto House accommodation, and another outpost along Sharahidra, uh, within the Kaduna State uh, accommodation. And we have uh, another outpost in the Rehabash area. Rehabash is where 100% of, uh, of pilgrims from the southwest uh, of the country um, reside. So we established a clinic there as well. And then another the uh, cluster is um, the Sharamosu, the general Sharamosu area. So we have one of our main clinics there. And um, we also have outposts within the Nasra House and Niger House. In addition to this, clinics are also set up in strategic locations, such as airports. At the last count, the national medical team attended to a total of 80,000 cases across the clinics set up by Narcan. We've had over 80,000 medical consultations. So when I say 80,000 medical consultation, uh, it doesn't mean that it's 80,000 people that are fallen sick, but the 80,000 uh, um, uh, engagements with doctors. In other words, the doctors uh, carried out 80,000 consultations. So a single person can come up to three times, four times or so. Now, we've carried out over 80,000 consultations. And um, the most common ailment was upper respiratory tract infection. That is cough, common cold, what we call common cold. However, some of the cases that come up for medical attention and a source of concern for Narcan were the preponderance of pregnancies and related issues. Officials are worried how pregnant women went through screening points in their respective states without being detected and allowed to find their way to the Holy Land. Someone that is pregnant, for example, and uh, coming to engage in the quite physically exacting rituals of Hajj, puts the pregnancy at risk and also her life at risk. And we have seen so many cases and we've had uh, even mortality, pregnancy-related mortality.
you know, we had several deliveries, as you may have heard. Um, the, the latest one was yesterday, you know, bringing the number to four deliveries within the kingdom. And we've also had a lot of uh, losses of pregnancies, you know, um, up to about six, you know. So, and then we had those that um, uh, either had threatened uh, abortion, that is the pregnancy is threatened, uh, but uh, we're able to safely manage them. Sequent to this development, Nakan has launched an investigation to get at the root of the matter. The outcome, the commission says, will determine those to be penalized for compromising the screening process and also the type of measures to be put in place to avoid future occurrences. This much was said by Nakan Commissioner for Planning, Research, Information, Statistics and Library Services, Sheikh Suleiman Momo, while speaking to journalists in Mecca. This pregnancy test was conducted in Nigeria. Our states also were impressed to conduct tests. Anybody who was able to with pregnancy is not supposed to be slated for this hatch. Our NACON staff, we carried out pregnancy tests on them and we got about two pregnant women among NACON staff that were supposed to come. Well, lie, we dropped them. They did not come. We dropped them. Nothing they didn't attempt to do. They wrote, they pleaded, we dropped them. Why? Because we must be seen to be example, to show example to everybody. They are there in Nigeria. Now, we got information from some state medical personnel who confirmed to us when we saw the issue of pregnancy here, they confirmed to our medical team here that they noticed A and B and C were pregnant and they told the ESCs of these states. And the ESCs told them that we overruled you. And these are people who employed them. And this is one of the reasons why we don't want to leave the medical team in the hands of the state. We have taken note of this and we are going to act on it. Other medical cases that had high prevalence rate during the just concluded Hatch exercise were hypertension, diabetes, and fractures among the aged pilgrims. We've also had um, other cases, like those with uh, pre existing hypertension, those with pre existing diabetes. Uh, some come in uh, diabetic, with diabetic emergencies, you know, either in coma or going into coma. And then some also presented with long-term complications of uh, what we call chronic complications of diabetes, leading to amputation. We've had about two or three amputations done so far as a result of uh, complications of diabetes. The national medical team will remain functional until all Nigerian pilgrims are airlifted back home. Meanwhile, Nigerian pilgrims, particularly those that had cause to visit the clinics, are full of praises for the national medical team constituted by Nakan, as well as the quality of services rendered at the clinics. I personally benefit a lot from the clinic because initially when I, we started the IG activities, we faced a lot of challenges. I went outside and bought drugs and the drugs cost me a lot of money. But when they established this uh, clinic, I always, I always come. This is my third time of visiting the clinic, and the clinic was they satisfied me. Naji wana asibitin sobiu. The baro kona jana sabat entergadi. Naji angkula ni ambani magani. Naviu deshi keni mutemeng karkarane masang AC ba sanye du kang mura kama ni nakuo makasa kibani magani mura awana asibiti. Masha Allah. Coming up next is Making the Heart. Tonight, Professor Mansur Sokoto takes us through discussions on how pilgrims should behave when they return home. The desire of all pilgrims is to earn Hajj Mabrur, meaning that is accepted by Allah. To achieve this, pilgrims must imbibe the lessons of Hajj 
and live with it throughout their lives. On making the Hajj tonight, Professor Muhammad Mansur Sokoto explains how pilgrims should conduct themselves after performing the Hajj. He begins by explaining the concept of Hajj Mabrur. At the Prophet said, Al Umrah to Illa Al Umrah, Kafara to Lima Bainahuma, while Hajj Al Mabrur, Laysalahu Jazaun Illa Al Jannah. When one performs Umrah, he is expected to be expiated of all his sins before doing another Umrah. And Al Hajj Al Mabrur accepted Hajj, Laysalahu Jazaun Illa Al Jannah, has no any reward except the paradise. Having attained this spiritual status and cleansing, pilgrims must be of good character. A pilgrim is expected after Hajj to be a better Muslim, to be a better citizen, to be well acquainted with Allah's laws, do's and don'ts, and uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to behave in a better way than he has been before. Another important thing is for pilgrims to be more dedicated in performing their religious duties just as they did while in performing the Hajj. So when a pilgrim comes here, sometimes he feels that he will never commit a sin at all. For fear of Allah, for the piety he has gained. But when he went back, he go to the market, he conducts his businesses, then things will weaken. That's why we are always enjoined to, 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 to take the acts of Ivada as our daily affairs. And that's why the five daily prayers. That's why the fasting of Thursdays and Mondays for those who can afford it. That's why the Qiyamul Layl. That's why the, the, the charities, Sadaqat, and all other things. So one is expected after Hajj to try as much as possible as he can to attach himself to various ibadat that he has been doing. Similarly, pilgrims are encouraged to be their brother's keepers. So when Muslims gather every day on five daily prayers, one of the main objectives of that is to make them love each other, to make them closer to each other, to identify the problems of each other so as to have solutions for it. The Islamic scholar advised those preparing to undertake the Hajj to avail themselves the opportunity of understanding Hajj rights as enshrined in Islam. Alhamdulillah, mission pilgrims Hajj Mabru. But before we round off the program, let's take some greetings from pilgrims to their loved ones. It is indeed a pleasure to me at this time to say hi to my people in my family, particularly in Shongom local government, in person, the executive chairman of the local government and, and the entire people of Shongo local government and Gombe state at large. I use this opportunity to greet our father, that's the Emir of Gombe, for doing the Salah Edel Kabir and the, His Excellency the Emerging Gombe, Alhaji Muhammad Inouye Haya, who is be the number one O O one in Gombe, and my family too, my whole entire family, but from both sides, and the Muslim Omar from Gombe said, and in Tia, Nigeria. Once again, Hajj Mabru. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you same time next week with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile phone number and other social media platforms. Once again, thanks for watching. Ma Asalam. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا